Um, I want to make some observations before we start. The program was to start at 9.30, and I can tell you that by the time I drove in here at 9, the guest speakers' vehicles were already out here. And he had been seated in the VIP lounge. This is something we don't see in our country as a general principle. It doesn't look important to us today, but it's part of what I think is lecture we are addressing. He does not really need any long introduction. You know him very well. But to refresh your memories, Pastor Dr. Kumui, just pretendant of Deeper Life Christian Life Ministry. Graduated from where? Where? We had only one university. I mean, that's at least. <laughs> you graduated from where? <laughs> university of where? <laughs> university of where? <laughs> no, no, we had one there. Okay. The consensus is that he graduated from the University of Ibadan. Right? And he had a first-class degree in mathematics. And he lectured in that subject matter at the University of Lagos before he became a full-time pastor. He has a doctorate degree. Founder and general superintendent of the Deeper Life, Deeper Christian Life Ministry. And this ministry spans across the length and breadth of Africa and all continents of the world. He teaches and preaches morals with clear mathematical analysis in his expression. He's a very well traveled minister and has been received by heads of government in different parts of the world. And what struck me was that I think in 1973, he started this mission with about 15 students who came to him for prayer sessions. By 2016, it is reputed that he was returning over 65,000 persons which as far as I'm concerned is a very conservative uh, estimate because his followers on internet and TV is much, much wider. He has established the Deeper Life High School and Angkor University. And Persons in the would I say the world? No, planet is bigger. In the planet, people who shape destinies. It's a rare privilege for me to chair the session today. And um, two things sound out when he's going to give this lecture, and why I'm happy to be here. First, that he graduated from the University of Ibadan where I also graduated from. <laughs> Secondly, the subject matter has to do with integrity. Whatever is white for him is white. White does not become black. Look at his head. <laughs> we share the same affinity, right? <laughs> at times when I sit in a crowd, and I see that I'm the only person with white hair, I begin to do an auditing. And at the end of the day, I discovered that um, black dye, you know black dye? 
has covered too many white hairs. <laughs> when you look too young and you are old in the body, when the time comes to run, run like a young man. I'm sure we'll have a very interesting time today. Um, what I normally tell people when we attend matters like this, leave all the inhibitions, all the things you thought you knew about integrity, that he's going to say the same thing I'm used to, leave them at the door. Keep your mind wide open. And you're going to get very fresh ideas. After his session, you would have opportunities to make your own contributions. Do we agree? Leave preconceived notions. And our flight would take us. When I looked at this paper, I initially was very surprised because I can tell you that it's not more than, um, I'm not sure it's up to 10 pages. <laughs> Small, slim thing. But we are here to listen to him. May I invite Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumoyi, the General Superintendent of DIPA Christian Life Ministry, to the podium. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. All protocols observed. It's a great pleasure for me to be here. And let me thank the organizers of this important conference for inviting me to speak on integrity, an indispensable quality required of the nation's auditors general. By the Constitution, the provision in section 85, paragraphs 2 and 4, and section 125, paragraphs 2 and 4, we know that enormous responsibilities are given to Auditors General of the Federation of our country, Nigeria, also of the states. The critical responsibility of auditing and reporting on all public accounts of the government, and similarly, various state laws entrust the same responsibilities on Auditors General for local governments to audit and to report on the accounts of the local governments in their respective states. The Auditors General, by implication, therefore, are supposed to be the conscience of the nation on public finance management matters. Indeed, they are, and you are, expected and rightly so, to be the gatekeepers and the watchdogs of the nation on public financial matters. This, then, is a great and onerous responsibility that requires the holders of these offices to possess studying qualities relevant and most critical of these qualities is integrity, which is what we're dealing with today. And we would examine this indispensable quality in our discussion. First of all, we need to talk about the meaning, the meaning of integrity and the importance of integrity. Integrity means the quality of being honest, the quality of having strong moral principles and moral uprightness. And it is connected with the truth. That is truthfulness, honesty, integrity, transparency go together. It is the quality that enables someone to follow his own or her own moral or ethical convictions 
and doing the right thing in all matters and all circumstances, even if no one is watching. Very important that we're not only doing what is right, only reporting what is right, when a higher power or higher auditor is going to examine what we've done, whether there are others to investigate or not, others to confirm or not, a person with integrity will do what is right, examine what is right, and report correctly, appropriately. Having integrity then means you are true to yourself and will do nothing. Again, I repeat, will do nothing that demeans or dishonors you in any way, at any time, or any cause. The synonyms were fight for integrity. Or we say there's integrity. It means we have honesty. Honesty at all times. Honesty in all things. Whether it is reaching or spoken. Uprightness. Probity. Rectitude. Honorableness. That you know the honor of your profession and the honor of your position. And you want to keep that by all means. It means that a person who has integrity is noble-minded and is truthful and is as well trustworthy. Integrity, perhaps, is the most important principle in leadership. One of the leaders I read on integrity said, if there were no integrity, that is, if there was no concept, no word, no vocabulary as integrity, we should invent one. It's so important that we cannot do without the concept and without the practice of integrity. Auditors write reports which are to be relied upon by the members of the public. It follows, therefore, that such reports must be truthful. Such reports must be honest because integrity requires telling the truth even when the truth hurts, when the truth appears ugly. It is better to be honest than to deceive or delude others. The quality is so important that the Almighty God himself recognized it, demanded it, and acknowledged it in the Holy Scriptures. A leader in the corporate world, his name is Dr. Orison Sweat Madi. He asked a question, and he titled the uh, section in which he wrote, he said, just suppose, just suppose for a moment that we live in a world where natural things will lie and deceive us as man does. He says, just suppose a world where the mountains, the sea, the forest, and the rivers were all shams. He said, suppose where the earth, we're living on earth, which looks rich and fruitful, but the world will mock us by refusing the harvest in return for our seed. He said, suppose we're living in a place where what appears like a beautiful landscape would eventually prove to be a deceptive mirage. He said, suppose we were living in a world where gravitation could not be depended upon, where the planets would not keep in their orbits, where the atoms were not true to the law reaching within them. This is quite obviously. This is uh, Madin saying, obviously, the conclusion would be such conditions would spell disaster. And it says the straightest and the surest path to respect personally, to respect the respect of our institution, to respect the respect of the position we hold, the shortest path is the to success and confidence 
It's through honesty and truthfulness. It says the straightest, shortest path to failure is through falsehood. In my subject, that is uh, my background of teaching and training, we say the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. And here, another leader applies that to integrity. And he says the straight line is the shortest in morals as well as in geometry. He says in geometry, we have the straight, the straight line, which is the shortest term. Uh, distance between two points. It says it's not only in geometry, not only in mathematics, but in morals too. It's the straightest, is the shortest distance when it's honesty and integrity. The twin brothers of honesty and truthfulness are the most important virtues in character, as well as in profession. And I checked up on, you know, some men of integrity, what they have said, and some countries, what the countries have said in their proverbs, in their countries, and practice, in their principles and their practices, in their countries, in various countries. What we have in Morocco and Algeria, it says, lies buzz like flies, but truth is as, as the brilliance of the sun. An old Russian proverb says, when one erects a throne to lies, one erects a gallows to the truth. It says, you don't even have to say, I don't believe the truth, I don't accept the truth. If you erect a throne for lies, automatically you have erected gallows to the truth. And then we have the term of proverb saying, truth is heavy. So, because of that, few care to carry it. And sometimes, you know, you weigh the truth. You are going to write this now. You are going to report this. And as you weigh it, how does it affect your position? How does it affect the office? How does it affect the reports, the people you are reporting, you know, their activities? That's why it says truth is heavy. Therefore, few care to carry it. But thank God, those of us who are here, whatever weight the truth may impose on us, will carry the truth. One doesn't open one's mouth any wider to tell a lie than to tell the truth. That's from Belgium. It says anybody who's going to tell a lie doesn't open his mouth wider than he's going to tell the truth. It's saying indirectly, you might as well go ahead and tell the truth. Because it's the same vocabulary you are going to use, the same thought pattern you are going to use, and also the same opening of the mouth. And uh, you, you remember uh, the, this uh, person, this is um, Daniel Webster, the one who used uh, his uh, dictionary uh, very much. He had something to say about the truth. He says, there is nothing so powerful as truth, and upon nothing so strange. That's what Daniel Webster said. Uh, Webster said, it says the truth is impossible to be soiled by any outward touch as the sunbeam. That's John Milton. You might be familiar with that name. The last of the quotations I'm going to uh, bring across to you, it says uh, what we have been us of the image of God is the law for truth and justice. The person who said that is uh, one of the earliest uh, patriarchs of uh, the Christian faith. Somebody said, this is uh, Dr. J. A. Cherandon. He says, uh, education and training, through the early years, so many years, no matter how extended, no matter how extensive, it may have been, will be a failure unless it has made us feel the supremacy or the supreme value of truth. It says that education, no matter what letters we have after our names, unless that education has awakened in us a profound love for the truth, and unless it has revealed to us the tremendous
various costs at which truth has been caged that education is not complete as it is. Habitual truthfulness is a bright and shining quality we should all possess. It grants strength in the path of duty. When we know that we're honest, when you know that whoever checks up the records, they know that this is the truth, the absolute truth. It gives you courage and strength, the moral character. And then it leads to the most enduring success. Without this virtue, integrity, without this virtue of truthfulness and transparency, there's no reliance on spoken or written reports. If I'm going to be reliable, and if the reports I give are going to be relied upon, there must be truthfulness and integrity. Because without integrity, without this great virtue, there's no confidence in men of authority and power. Because we know whatever he says, you really can't rely on it. You've caught him so many times doctoring the truth, changing the truth, adjusting the truth to suit what the people want to hear. And if there is no integrity, there's no security in pledges and oaths. Truth is always consistent with itself. And you don't have to adjust anything. You know? It doesn't need any help from outside. On the other hand, falsehood is dangerous and humiliating. One lie unavoidably needs or leads onto another lie until the deceiver himself is entangled and he becomes ensnared in his own trap. Falsehood is difficult to be maintained and there is no vice which does not have as its beginning a lie. Any crime people commit today, wrong things that people do today, whether privately or publicly, whatever it is, they do which will come to be wrong. It had its origin in deception, in lying. Denying a fault always doubles that fault. All that a man can get by lying and falsification is that he will not be trusted even when he decides to tell the truth. Because we know that habitually he's been a liar, habitually he deceives. And because of that, even when he decides to tell the truth, who wants to believe him? What are the benefits and the blessings we receive as we have, as we manifest integrity? Much less benefits and blessings will abound in our lives, personally, in our families, and then we pass something good to our own children, and then to the people who are following us and looking at us and they're holding us up as models. Not only that, will be a blessing to the nation, our nation Nigeria. If we all were to act and operate with this rare quality of integrity and truthfulness in all our activities, our nation will be a better place for all its citizens. Today, the damage caused by lack of integrity in the conduct of government businesses is in particular is seen everywhere. But as we all decide that the path to follow, the path of honor to follow, is the path of integrity, great will be the blessing of God upon us as individuals and upon us as a nation uh, that we serve. There will be abundant blessings. We'll curtail or we'll limit waste in our land. We'll also become the conscience of the people. And they know that once we're there, we're going to be in charge of the auditing. They want to put things right before they even get to us. They'll be the preservation of institutions, not only the audit institution in our country, all the other institutions too, because they have connections with us. 
and they will be the preservation of a nation. Blessings for children, that is the generations to come, as we dutifully, with integrity, do a duty. Well, they call me preferred people and a preferred nation. Already you understand the image, you know the image of a nation anywhere you go in the world. It's like they already suspect us. They take uh, sometimes in some places Nigerians as um, criminals until you put, you prove them right. All that will change. In conclusion, let me say that as we perform our responsibilities, our uh, principle should be guided by the fear of God and we should ensure that our conduct in the carrying out of our responsibilities uh, follows a principle. Let me take this principle from Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. It says, what things soever, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report. The word good there is not talking of a good in the sight of the people who want to see things, uh, you know, they want to see the other side of the truth. It's talking about the things that we know is perfectly true and perfectly good. It says, if there be any virtue, like integrity, if there be any praise, and uh, it says we shall think on these things, we should live by these things, and we shall conduct our business. Everything we do by these principles. I believe as we do them, and as we practice them, and as we are meticulous about what we do, knowing we want to satisfy our consciences that this is the absolute truth. I believe the Almighty God will bless our nation through every one of us. I will bless you as individuals and all that God has promised the people who faithfully follow him and serve him in serving the nation. All those blessings the Lord will bring upon you and your family, our nation. Thank you very much and God bless you.